Aloha again, and we are back where Snapdragon Behind the Silicon began. And today, we are wrapping the season in a place that's more than just paradise. It's a launch pad for breakthrough technologies. And when Snapdragon returns to Maui, it's never just about the view, although that helps. So join me and our Snapdragon insiders on our final journey as we redefine what is possible from stellar performance to experiences that fill out of this world. Today, we're joined by Josh Quinones, YouTube content creator from California, and Harriet Coverley, accounts assistant and Manchester United advocate from the UK. Hey guys, how are we? Good, good, good. Excited. Oh yeah, definitely. Hawaii is known to be the destination for astronomers. So today, we're here at the University of Hawaii Maui College to look deep into the stars of astronomy experts who are using laptops powered by Snapdragon to wrangle impressive imagery and data sets. And with Snapdragon Summit kicking off shortly, the countdown to some major and very exciting announcements has officially begun. Are you ready? I know I'm ready. <laughs> when I think of astronomical data processing, I'm thinking of you know a bunch of machines in a big room at NASA yeah. and being able to see how Snapdragon is gonna be able to handle that kind of computation similarly, it's gonna be pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm excited to see everything that the expert is gonna teach us today. I've got a bit of a weird fascination with the moon, so I'm excited to see if there's anything to learn there. And then we're obviously standing at the edge of something big with the summit coming up, so I'm excited to hear all the conferences and the keynote. All right, so let's not waste another second. Let's go behind the silicon and into the stars. Hey. <laughs> hey guys. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the whole process works when it comes to the big telescopes being able to capture the planets or stars or whatever it is that's out there in space. I've never really seen science to this degree with the size of the telescopes that I imagine we're going to see. Picking the brains of an astronomer, I'm sure I'll be more impressed than I was in my physics classroom. I hope my physics teacher isn't watching this. <laughs> oh wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh wow. Joining us now is J.D. Armstrong, an astronomy expert who spends a great deal of his time transforming vast amounts of data into breathtaking discoveries. J.D., good to see you. Why is Hawaii so good for astronomy? There's, there's sort of a cultural and a scientific component. Mm -hmm. The Kanaka Maoli, the Native Hawaiian people, historically have been some of the greatest astronomers of all time. They used astronomy and other studies of nature to navigate between the islands. And then there's the scientific side. Hawaii is a series of islands that are isolated peaks. The wind flow doesn't go over them, it goes around them, so the airflow is not turbulent. And also the isolation, we get away from a lot of light pollution. I think as far as offices go, this is a pretty cool place to work, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. In a little bit, I'm going to pass you off to Alex. Mm -hmm. Alex is an instructor here at the college. And then once it gets dark, we're going to be able to open this roof and look out and actually do some observation. Awesome. Yeah. Wow, it's the whole ceiling. That is very cool. Yeah. We're now talking to Alex Meyer, a lecturer here at the university. Here at the observatory, the students are able to learn how to use these telescopes from fully automated telescopes with cameras to handheld telescopes with eyepieces. We can actually use these laptops powered by Snapdragon to move the telescope to anywhere we want in the sky. Oh. <laughs> And so what it's doing right now is it's determining its X and Y coordinate and it's rotating to the perfect position that I get it to look at the object that we want it to look at. Sometimes you need to take a long exposure of something and as Earth rotates, we use the laptops and some software to counteract all of that. It also helps us take these automated runs. So here we have Saturn here and you can see the rings, it is a bit blurry. So to get a more refined image of Saturn, we take a bunch of pictures and then we stack them all together. Saturn is incredibly bright. It's really close to us compared to these galaxies and nebulas that are out there. So the exposure time for Saturn is actually quite short. We often do long exposures for the faintest objects. How much of your time do you spend here in the observatory? 
Most of the time we're here in the observatory, but we oftentimes try to give the students a practical experience and we head up to the summit for that. We go to these remote sites where there's no power. The laptops powered by Snapdragon have an excellent battery life. It lasts the entire time that we're up there. There are these community outreach events that we go to where we get the community together, we set up mobile telescopes and we just see what we can see. Oh, here you guys back. Oh, wow. I'm looking at Saturn right now. <laughs> you can see the rings and everything. It's so clear, but it almost doesn't look real. Oh, wow. In front of us, you can see we have some of the past students' work. Yeah, so first up we have uh, what's known as the Crab Nebula, this huge cloud of gas and it's the birthplace for many stars. Such stunning visuals. How do you create images like this? Yeah, what I'm about to do is process a photo of the M2 globular cluster. A globular cluster is basically a group of really, really old stars. They're all about the same age. Mm -hmm. These photos are noise that's in between the starlight and the camera. Finally, we select our light frames, which is the complete starlight. You can see that this noise is randomly different. It adds up. So the stacking process takes away this noise. We start the process of stacking and aligning so that all of the actual images with their individual stars are lined up. We're performing that mathematical analysis. This frame is the master frame for the red channel. So to make a color photo, we need green and blue channels as well. So it's quite the process with many layers, literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This software does a color combination. If they're all aligned. The noise has been removed from them already. And here it is. And there it is. That's the whole process that we go through to get a final science image of the M2 globular cluster. Stunning. So how important is it to you and the students to have a powerful device? It really only took about 30 seconds to do what we just did. On older generations of our hardware, it would take upwards of five to 10 minutes. And this is just with 60 photos. Imagine in some cases, but the faintest starlight, that can be hundreds of photos and it would just take way too long to do in a single class session. And what about multitasking? How important is it for the students to be able to multitask efficiently on a laptop to be able to do the work that they do? Sometimes you're taking images at the same time that you're processing them. That's where multitasking comes in, to be able to both control the camera and control the processing software. I don't know about you guys, but I'm finding this incredibly yeah, impressive. Mine's just a little bit blown. <laughs> <Yeah. here. laughs> it's the next day and we're at the Snapdragon Summit where it's time to hear those long-awaited announcements. We're entering a whole new phase. AI-powered computing is becoming woven into how we live and work. I am super excited to announce Snapdragon X2 Elite. It delivers up to 31% faster peak performance. Requires 43% less power than our first generation. Introducing Snapdragon X2 Elite Extreme Edition. Everything about this chip is unleashed for ultimate performance. It's a 50% faster CPU, 2x faster GPU. We are 75% faster versus our competition. Our competitor's peak performance requires 222% more power. Snapdragon is redefining what smartphones and PCs can do. The future is bright, and we're excited to keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. Joining us now is the wonderful Frank Wang, the marketing lead behind the newly announced Snapdragon X2 Elite platform. Thanks, it's us, awesome to be here. So we have this beautiful and gorgeous demo room set up, all of these different areas and different environments. And so you get to really get to experience all the different things that we said on the keynote stage about the technological advancements into real world use cases and how we use it in your everyday. Yes, well, the energy in the room was absolutely buzzing. So what was the biggest shift that users should be looking out for? We just had this massive increase across CPU, GPU, and NPU, and enables all of these different new experiences from content generation to immersive experiences. We're really looking at how do we improve everything. So yeah, I was surprised by the CPU. I didn't think it could get that much faster. <laughs> With it being 80 tops, it's really exciting to see what AI experiences that can unlock.
Okay, so we just heard some impressive announcements, bold statements, jaw-dropping stats. Photo editing is going to get a lot better. Video yes. editing, me being a content creator, that's huge. But not only that, I'm also a musician, so record your music, you know, using these laptops, not only in a sit-down setting, but in a live setting as well. The way it's going to handle all that is just amazing. Just the amount of upgrades that were mentioned that literally come into everyday life that you wouldn't have thought about and how impressive the metrics were for all three of the components with the upgrade. Yeah, mind-blowing. It's the sheer bold ambition of the oh, yeah. Snapdragon X2 oh. Elite platform. You know, it's no longer just about raw performance, it's about balancing super fast performance with efficiency, artificial intelligence, multitasking, and so much more. It really is gonna be exciting to compute this year, right? It is, yes. definitely. <laughs> What I learned the most, I suppose, is realising that tech, how it impacts everything around us, is fascinating. I'm rethinking my degree choices and seeing how the laptops powered by Snapdragon actually make it so much more efficient. I've always wondered, you know, how are they getting such clear photos of, you know, the planets that they do or stars, you know, or balls of gas in space. Or just seeing how it's able to handle everything shows me how far we've come when it comes to this kind of tech. I can only imagine, you know, how much further we're going to be able to go with this and it really gets me excited for the future. And that is a wrap for Maui where the waves aren't the only thing making noise. We've unpacked the biggest announcements from the Snapdragon Summit and if you're feeling the ripple effect of what's next, you are not alone. From coders to creators, dreamers to developers, we've seen how Snapdragon continues to push the boundaries of what's possible. Behind the Silicon may be signing off for now, but thank you so much for watching. Stay curious, stay inspired, and we'll see you on the other side of what's next. The Behind the Silicon series has been shot on Snapdragon. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications.